Listen, the only reason I let you guys in here was the title of your movie. Blood on Lust Highway sounded like something from demographic heaven. But I look at your script, and there's very little blood, even less lust, and not a single highway. Lust Highway is the main character's name. Yeah, he cuts himself shaving. Well, if that's all you guys have to offer, you can go take a flying... Wait! Uh, we have much more than that. Yeah, like Bale Watch, starring Scott Bale. The Scott Bale. And he, he runs a clock store. By the beach. And all these young, beautiful people in bathing suits are always coming in. Uh, to buy watches. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. I, I got something much better than that. It's, um... It's called Night Watch. Sounds familiar. Well, no, no, this is totally original. It's about a lifeguard uh, who, who, who works at night. And he, he patrols the beaches in a talking car. At night? And the best part is, we're going to give the car a girlfriend. Yeah, a cute little pink Jeep. And I've already signed the star. It's, uh... It's, he's my latest discovery. His name is Leon Hasselhoff. Wait a minute. This is a total ripoff. And who is this Leon Hasselhoff? Is he uh, the David's distant nephew or, or cousin? Or, or... No, no, no. <laughs> it's nothing like that. In fact, Hasselhoff isn't even his real name. Oh, look, those first two ideas were real crap. But envision this. Knott's Landing. Knott's Landing? That was done years ago. Not Knott's. Knott's, as in Don Knott's. And he'll run an airport. Never mind that. Listen to this. It's called the Night Train. It's the love boat on tracks with an all-black cast. Yeah, and Sherman Helmsley will be the conductor. And Isaac from the love boat will be the bartender. Hey, wait a minute. Doesn't Isaac have a drinking problem? No, no problem. He'll be Isaac. I'll be a customer. Hey, how about a Harvey Wolver? Out of sight. See, that's funny. Nothing's funnier than a drunken bartender. And and as the as the train's doctor, Julie is serving there. Huh? Look. I'll admit, those ideas were real, real crap. But listen to this. Ricardo Montalban and Palm Dauber. Pam. Pam. Pam Dauber. Rourke and Mindy. Fantasy Island's original Mr. Rourke. And Mark and Mindy's original Mindy. Was there another Mindy? Exactly. Who could replace Mindy? And instead of Mr. Mark saying nanu nanu, he'll say tattoo tattoo. Oh, those are really great ideas. But the WB Network doesn't have time for. Wait, wait. If you didn't like those ideas, wait till you see this. Abe Vigoda and Eric Estrada in Fish and Chips will not be seen tonight. Instead, we bring you this special, special, special program. Exactly. In 3D. If you enjoyed the previous installments of Exactly, just imagine how much you'll enjoy watching the new one with a genuine pair of 3D glasses. One side of the screen will drive you to distraction with a brilliant shock of red, while the other side will jump right at you with a vibrant blue hue. And while this is exactly 3D, the show can still be enjoyed when viewed flat. So take off your hush puppies, pour yourself a cocktail, and enjoy the show.
being so formal, Skippy. I don't know, Frisky. By the way, how's that new case come? Frankly, I'm baffled. Seven beheadings, but only one machete found on the scene. Hmm. Puzzling. Well, I better get back to work. Good luck. Thanks, Captain. Hmm. Another mystery. Hey, it's a nice shirt. It looks like my size, too. Let's go by. Just when you thought it was safe to wear clothes, it's laundry day. Now playing at a laundromat near you, no one will be seated during the spin cycle. The spin cycle. The spin cycle. And now, for the finest in children's deprogramming, Sam and Murray Crafts Hatland. On a cold and windy day, there lived a boy named Ronnie J. He was running, then he sat, and then he saw a little hat. Put me on your head, Ronnie, put me on your head, and we will run away to the land of sunny days. He reached inside the little hat, thinking that that would soon be that. But it pulled him back instead, and circles swam inside his head. He started falling, falling falling down. He got up and he looked around, you won't believe just what he found. A land where everyone wore hats and they were super groovy cats. It's a paradise, Ronnie, it's a paradise. We wear chapeaus and heaven knows we all look real nice. But don't think that quite all was well for every heaven has a hell, and you know this one has one too, ruled by the evil Hattie Poo. He rules the land with a big bat, and he kidnapped Hetty the Hat. When Ronnie heard of all this mess, his heart was filled with much distress. But Ronnie was quite young and brave, he knew that Hetty must be saved. There was only one thing to do, go to the castle, Hattie Poo. Put me on your head, Ronnie, put me on your head. He heard the haunting words that Hetty the Hat had said. But he got kind of bored, and on his own accord, he went back into town and he wanted some kicks and some real nice chicks so he met up with cuckoo the clown 
Cuckoo gave him what he wanted, and Ronnie was never haunted. He never tried to save Hetty, and had a poo he'd never see. You are just okay, Ronnie, you are just okay. I will not mess with the one who's known as Ronnie J. Cause he's living in Hatland, the crazy where it's at land. It's the wackiest, tackiest, psychedelic, shackiest, craziest place since Flatland. It's Hatland. Can't get ahead if you don't wear a hat. How's that for a head rush? Because of the length of the theme song, we don't have time to broadcast the actual episode of Sam and Murray Craft's Hatland. Stay tuned next week for another episode of Hatland, followed by the debut of Sam and Murray Crafts, The Land of the Lost Luggage. Hey man, is this Freedom Rock? No man, this is even better. It's Jingle Rock. Jingle Rock? Well, turn it up. That's right, it's Jingle Rock, featuring 106 of your favorite commercial classics, including Black Sabbath's classic tire commercial. Michelin. And who can forget this classic public service announcement by Joe Cocker? And the buck teeth wide like a mountain side. Wow! This jingle rock is far out! Yeah, it even includes this classic from the Led Zeppelins. There's a lady who's sure. There's a seven day cure. And she's buying some honest at seven. And she looks to the east as she deals with the east. And she's buying some honest at seven. Ooh, it's the cheese from under. If there's a bustle in your hedgerow, don't be alarmed now. It's just a spring clean for the May Queen. Yes, there are two paths you can go by, don't take the wrong one. In seven days we'll make your thing clean. And what classic rock collection would be complete without a smarmy ballad from Elton John? This time, it's his tribute to the late Linda McCartney. Goodbye, Linda Mac. Though I never knew you at all, I saw you in a photograph that was made by Eastman Kodak. And it seems to me you lived your life like a beetle in the wings. Never knowing who to turn to when the walrus sings. Cancer knocked, you let him in. And you said, live and let die. You're no longer on the run. you Linda in the sky. Wow! I can't believe you can receive all these classic commercials in one collection. <laughs> it must be worth millions of dollars. Wait, there's still more. If you order now, you'll receive 99 past classics free of charge, including this hit for madness. My ass in the middle of my street. And what collection of ass classics would be complete without this milestone from Simon and Garfunkel? Hello, anus, my old friend. I've come to wipe you clean again. Because cleanliness is an issue So I will use a very soft tissue And I will venture 
Where sunlight never shines And feces minds Taking in the sounds of Charmin and of course, no collection of ass classics would be complete without Fred Astaire's Cheek to Cheek. Available on CD-ROM, CD, cassette, LP, 8-track, reel to reel, and in limited edition on the Speak and Spell format. To order, dial Richmond 9555-ROCK. That's Richmond 9555-ROCK. That number again, Richmond 9 555 Rock. Write it down, Richmond 9 555 Rock. Tattoo it on your shoulder, Richmond 9 555 Rock. Do it now, do it for life, do it, cause I said so. Alex here, and this is me good friend Tim. Feeling a bit thirsty? Shut up, Tim, I'll do the talking. Feeling a bit thirsty? Then come on down to a Clockwork Orange Julius. <laughs> Julius, you can always be locos. It's orange juice plus a little something extra. It's good for the old Petrovka. I don't go for the gut about Tim. And all your timness, if you don't shut your pickle long bag, I'll give you a whole show thrashing, you won't soon forget. <coughs> What's wrong, Alex? Oh, it's the lid the treatment. Just the thought of violence makes me violently ill. <coughs> So come on down to a couple of orange Julius. Hi, I'm Steven Spielberg. My film, Saving Private Ryan, has won lavish praise for its lifelike depiction of World War II and its overall stupendously brilliant achievement in filmmaking. In fact, it was voted Best Picture by all the major critics except for one Academy. Now, the Saving Private Ryan that you've seen is not my original vision of the film. You see, despite my incredible track record, the studio would not give me the final cut. I, I guess they still haven't forgiven me for 1941. But now, I proudly present Saving Private Ryan, the special edition. Show it back on. We've got Nazis to kill. Yes, sir. Sir. Dear diary, war date? Sometime in the early 40s. Where am I? Somewhere in Europe. What am I doing? Killing Nazis. The horrors of war are one thing, but the Nazis are just plain evil. Uh, 
Captain Miller. Why do we gotta fight in this war? Well, Chickalini, life is a paradox that pits morality against sin and throws them together into a picnic basket of emotion. But in this war, this war is all about those darn Nazis. I'm talking about Adolf Hitler, the very picture of evil. And the head of the German mafia, Don Nazi. That's a fine boss. That's a good reason to fight in the war, to kill the Nazis. We've got some good men here, strong, loyal men. Hey, Captain, I'm hearing voices. I must be going crazy. Go away, Chickalini. I'm writing in my diary. OK, Captain, write in your diary. But say something nice about Private Chickalini. Private Chickalini is a good soldier. But there are many good soldiers, which is why I become so distressed when I receive the following telegram. Captain Miller. At ease. There are many soldiers dying, Captain Miller. Many soldiers dying? It is the truth, sir. I ain't lying. And many of the soldiers have the last name of Ryan. We got to keep more from dying. That's why we That's why we're saving Private Ryan! Okay, boys. This could take days, months, maybe even a year or two, but we've got to find this Private Ryan. There are about a hundred or more soldiers in this general vicinity. We're going to question each and every one of them, and maybe we'll get lucky and find a needle in a haystack and one of these guys will know where Private Ryan is. Like maybe this guy here. Hey, soldier, do you know of Private Ryan? I'm Private Ryan. <laughs> wow, what a lucky break, man. <laughs> we gotta take you home. Cause all of your brothers, they dead. <laughs> all, my, all my brothers? <laughs> yeah, all of them. <laughs> dead? Yeah, I did his doornail. <laughs> Insensitive bastards! He is loved and worshipped all over the world, especially at Christmas time. And now he's back! You, you know, what, the, the, these nails in my hands and, and feet sure do smart. But the thing that really bothers me is the doggone fair heights I have. I look up. I look down. 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 Jimmy Stewart Superstar. <laughs> Starring Rob Halford as Judas. You can't take it with you, Jimmy Stewart. You conquered right after you came and saw. It's been a wonderful life, Jimmy Stewart. Now there's no one to stop me from breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law.
and special guest starring Billie Holiday as Mary Magdalene. I don't know how to love him, don't know how to care for him. He's my man, he's just my man. Jimmy Stewart Superstar, now playing at a revival church near you. Hi, I'm Ron Gwynn, and welcome to Failed Animal Rescues. Tonight on Failed Animal Rescues, meet the retriever who never came back. But first, let's go to How Much a Iowa and the case of the hairball from hell. We were pretty much used to the hack, hack, hack sound that Skanky used to make when she was um, hacking up those hairballs, but this time she was coughing for us straight 45 minutes before Eric came in to try to save her. Yeah, I remember we were watching 
We were watching the TV when she started, when she started coughing. I was going to let her go on about her business, but uh, it was right during the middle of my TV show. So uh, I just taken this course in the Heinrich Maneuver, and I, uh, I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. Jan and her couples were spending a leisurely evening at home watching television, as I suppose you are right now. When their cat Skanky suddenly started dry heaving hairballs, let me tell you, it wasn't a pretty sight. It's too bad there wasn't a camera present during the incident. But we here at Vale Animal Rescues are prepared to show you an enhanced dramatic reenactment of the tragedy using actors to play the parts of Jan and Eric Couples and their cat Skanky. Remember, we use only trained stunt pets here on Vale Animal Rescues. Don't try this at home with Little Spot or Pookie. Well, we've been watching the TV and uh, I noticed that uh, Skanky had been coughing up his hairball for about 40 odd minutes. I said, Eric, there is something wrong with Skanky. Eric, there's something wrong with Skanky. Well, I got up right then and there and decided I was going to give her the Heinrich maneuver, which of course I just learned. Instead of the hairball squirting out of Skanky, Skanky squirted out of Eric's hands and into the front wall of the couple's home. But that didn't kill our Skanky. It just made her cranky. Yeah. You wouldn't believe the ruckus she made. <clears throat> that Skanky, she was a fasty kitty. But, um, you know, when she hit the wall, that hairball just popped right out. That would have been the end of a normal hairball, but this was the hairball from hell. And I remember Dag Nanit, just as she was hitting the floor, that hairball, which she just coughed up, bounced right off the ceiling, straight back into the mouth of the pussy. I remember when she first got the hairball. It was right around 7 o'clock. He was watching Mama's Family. Mm -hmm. And then at 7.30, Duke the Hazard was on. Yeah, it was a rerun. They're all reruns, honey. No, no, they ain't all reruns. There's some I ain't never seen. Sure, hun. They're all reruns. Mm. But anyway, um, <clears throat> we sure loved our Skanky. I, I just really loved the way she used to just chase her little tail around. Uh, that was, that was Hound Leroy. Ew, that's right. <clears throat> but Skanky used to do things, too, that, that we will always remember. Yeah. You were really close to Skanky, weren't you? Well, uh, not really close. What do you mean, not really close? Well... Well... Mm. Well, we're not actually Jan and Eric couples. You're not? No, we're... We're actors pretending to be Jan and Eric couples. What are you saying to me? That this was all some kind of big joke? That for the last half hour we've done nothing but poke fun at some easy targets of the cultural mainstream? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> exactly! I'd turn my head, I'd back away, 
I wouldn't want to know. He scares me so. I want him so. I love him. So.